So I play mostly rhythm guitar. I'm a metal guitar player and my technique is focused on down picking. Now for those of you that may not have seen or heard of us before, I'm going to do a play through of a track. I'm probably going to mess it up, I do apologise. Um, just so that you guys, you guys can gauge where I'm coming from and then we'll continue on with the workshop. Is everyone enjoying the Guitar Summit so far? Yeah. Everyone's first time here? No. Second? So you, it wasn't here last year, was it? Yeah. It was? Okay, cool. Okay, it's a sick event, my first time. I'm very excited to be here and uh, I'm going to play a song called Doxa.
sorry if you don't like metal, guys. <laughs> uh, so that's a song called Doxa. I wrote that originally in 2009. I still struggle to play it to this day. Uh, so apologies for the few mess-ups that I just made from there. It sounds really complicated, doesn't it? It's not. So uh, it's just layering pieces together. And I'll try and sort of explain where I'm coming from with that. So you guys obviously know about music. You know when you hear those four notes, a vocalist is sung and it just stays in your head forever. You know what I'm talking about, those four notes. You know, it can be something as simple as if you've got a time, as simple as you know? It's basically making loads of those different pieces and piecing them together. It's kind of how I construct music, and it's always been the way that I've tried to construct music. And anything that you hear that's complicated in music will always have a simple foundation to it, regardless of how complex the music it can be Mozart, it can be anything from the classical era all the way through to metal, it always has the simple foundation, even if it sounds very, very complicated. So I'm going to try and break down some of um, what I do. So, as I've already said, I use little motifs and piece them together. Um, and we're just going to start there with Doxa. So, we're going to start with this little tapping sequence. Yeah. You heard me playing that over and over again for about a minute during that song, yeah? Um, so, let's just take that. So basically all I've done is take out the tap out of one, so it sounds like it's really complicated because it's a 9 8 phrase and a 7 8 phrase. I'm really struggling with speaking and playing at the same time, so I apologise about this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the second phrase is 7. When you add all that up together, it actually makes a 4-4 four, four phrase. So it's just four, eight, eight phrases. So it's just jumping off the offbeat. You guys following? <laughs> Everyone confused? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's try something a little bit more simple. Um, so I'm going to take a riff from another song that we have called Atlas. In fact, if you saw the masterclass earlier, you would have uh, you would have already seen this. But okay, so simple phrases pieced together. So let's take Atlas. Sounds like it's all over the place again, so let's break it down. Let's take the tapping bit at the end. Yeah? You guys got that? Okay, so that's a little phrase that I use multiple times during this song. And I'm going to show you the next place where I play where it's slightly different. So. Two very, very similar sounding sections, slightly different, played in two different parts of the song. You guys following me? Hello? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go further into that riff then. So, we started it like this. So let's take that rhythm. Pretty simple. One, one, two, one, one, two. I end up taking that and making a complete riff out of it as well, in that song. And at the end of this, I'm going to play the song and see if you pick up on all these little nuances as well. So... That would be the riff, and then it's introducing it before, in the pre-chorus. So... What I'll do actually right now is I'm going to play the song and then I'm going to break down as well so you guys can sort of see where it's coming from because it's probably a little bit easier for some of you if we play the song first. So this song is called Atlas.
song, did anyone follow what I said before playing? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Did someone just say very easy? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go a little bit deeper. So let's go back to that riff. Plays three different times in the song, not including repeats. Did anyone pick up on that? So first time was in the second riff. Second time was obviously for the breakdown riff. Yep, and then the third time was in the middle section where it played the same rhythm in a different way. Yeah, everyone following? Sick. So one thing that I always say to everyone is that people pick up on melody, melody before they pick up on rhythm. So you can play the same rhythm as many times as you want, and if you change the melody around it, then people are going to pick up on it less. They're going to think it's a completely different part. Has anyone tried this while they've been songwriting before? Interesting. <laughs> no one. I'll show you an example. The first song that I played, the complicated riff that came in second. You guys are wondering what was going on. I do too, I can play it. Um, so it's like... Take all the notes out of that. Same rhythm, completely different meaning. So when you have a song and you're really struggling to find a riff in it, why don't you just try either taking all the notes out of it, try making it into something else, or maybe even adding notes to it. Or maybe taking sections of what you've done as well, almost like a subgroup. You know, a lot of metal, um, the riffs are followed by the bass. They'll just follow them exactly. But it's really cool if you can make a subgroup of that rhythm as well. I'm gonna show you an example of that as a way to open up your um, creativity when it comes to writing riffs. Um, so this, song, uh, this riff is from a song called Denial. So we'll play that section. And then take away all the high notes and you have this. A core riff in itself, right? So, taking, taking notes out of riffs or adding notes in can really differentiate quite a lot on the meaning of the riff. So, the best way to explain it is, is I'm talking to you right now in this tone of voice, but if I start screaming at you the same words, it has a different application, right? And all I've done is just change the way that I'm talking to you. And it's the same thing with this. Another thing that a lot of people don't try is octaves. Who here has tried playing their riffs in different octaves? Let's just take Layla. Completely different application again. And that is all over our record. So I'm going to show you some examples of that as well. So there's a song called Empty Vessels Made the Most Noise, which is on our first record. And it has this little phrase in it. You guys hear the three different octaves I just played it in? Completely different meanings again just from the same bunch of notes. And it's amazing how many people don't just try playing their, their, their riffs in different octaves. I don't, there's hardly any guys in metal that I see doing this. One guy that I actually got it from is a guy called Chimp Spanner. Is anyone familiar with a guy called Chimp Spanner? No. You guys listen to metal? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Chimp Spanner is, uh, it's kind of like a fusion-y jazz thing. It's like, imagine you're playing with sugar mixed with I don't know, almost kind of Guthrie Govan kind of thing. M mixed with Blade Runner. <laughs> um, yeah, you, should, you guys should check it out. There's a song in particular that's called The Mirror, and it's one riff from start to finish. And it's just a really good way to sort of show you guys how you can just use one riff and change the meaning of that riff. So I've gone on about different playing parts in different octaves. Do you guys try playing your riffs in 
different keys. And I'm not talking about just changing it from C sharp minor to D minor. I'm talking about changing it from like C Aeolian to Lydian, for example. No one's tried this either. You've tried it. Okay, and you'll understand. Okay, I'm just going to show you an example of this. I'm going to do a really easy one so I don't have to work it out. So um, I'm going to go from Aeolian to um, Phrygian and the same riff that I had before. same tonal center, but you've completely changed the meaning of that riff just by playing it in a different place. So say that the root of my, um, the root of my song is this. Play the same riff as in the Phrygian version. It's changed its expression, it's changed sort of its identity, even though technically it's exactly the same notes. So you guys should really try this stuff because it's very, very cool. You don't have to write any more music, that's the beautiful thing about it. You've got all the music there, you're stuck, I can't think of a riff to write after this part. Just take what you've already got, you know? Uh, take like little sequences of your notes as well, like I mean, there's a lot of times when I write little pieces like I was saying at the start where imagine a vocalist can sing those four notes and imagine that you just bring all of those sequences together. And I've done that a few times with a few riffs throughout the albums that we have. Uh, just, are any of you guys familiar with the song I, the Creator? Not very many. Yes. One. Yeah. Two. <laughs> I think the main one to do is the crazy riff in the middle, you know that? It's just a diminished phrase, pretty simple, but it keeps coming back. And the good thing about that, the one thing I always learned in music actually, just to go back a little bit from why I do this, is one thing that my music teacher always said to me is that you had to introduce the music before it actually fully happened. And it's something that Mozart, Bach, and all these guys used to do, almost like little motifs. You hear it in film music a lot as well, where a little section of this piece of music will sort of rear its head a little bit, and then the full version of it will come later on. And I think that's what a lot of metal struggles with introducing parts, it's all just random riff after random riff. So writing in a motif sort of way, it gives you the opportunity to sort of use these ideas before they fully come in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like for example, just this riff that I've played already 10 times in the last couple of minutes. Just to explain that a little bit further, so. That riff again. Let's try it in triplets. change the feel of it, you know, I'm sorry, I should probably do a pulse for you guys, so, it's, so, um, uh, let's try the pulse in triplets of one, two, three, four. I know it's hard without a click or, or drums, but just try this with your own ideas, just try playing it in a, a triplet variation or something like that, and you'll see but it completely changes the meaning of the same part. It's actually really easy. It means writing music is just made so much easier because you don't have to think of 10 riffs per song anymore. You have to think of four riffs per song. Do you know what I mean? It's efficiency. I don't think it's either, I don't even think it's running out of ideas. I think it's becoming and using those ideas more wisely to make everything cohesive. And another band that does this is Dream Theatre, between albums. Any fans of Dream Theatre here? Mr. John Petrucci? Yeah? So you know, if you go to Images and Words, you have Metropolis Part 2, and then on the scenes from a memory, they play a variation of it in a different key. Yeah? Can't remember the name of the song on uh, Scenes from a Memory, but they do a variation of it in a different key, and it's just glorious, because you've heard it before, and it just makes you happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, right. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I have talked about right now? Everyone's scared. I'm a little bit scared, don't worry, it's okay. No questions? Not one. Well, okay. How's about playing another song for you guys? Good. Yeah? Okay. Um, I'm gonna play another one off the new record. It's called Stygian Blue. It's not released yet, so please no filming. 
I will not put it online until that uh, was released. It's so hot in here that this guitar just will not stay in tune. spoken about throughout this entire thing, I've just played in that song, did anyone pick up on it? No? An octave. The subroof, did anyone pick up on the subroof? I'll try and think of a more cohesive way to say this. If anyone's coming to my masterclass, I have that written down. It's tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. in the, uh, what's the name of the hotel next door? Deuter? Anyone? No? Okay, it's the hotel next door. Anyway. Um, so in the meantime, I think it is this gentleman's time to go now. So I want to say thank you very much for listening. Sorry if it was a little bit short, but I do appreciate you guys sitting here. Hopefully you learned something. If you want to ask me some questions at the end, I'm just going to pack up my stuff here. You can ask all the questions you want. But thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it.